Welcome to the first example for chapter six. This is the only ex example problem video that focuses only on the initial ideas of angular speed and tangential speed, because the majority of the chapter is thinking about circular motion and the forces involved with that. So for this example and the others from section 6.1, we want to use our generic general problem solving method that always starts with a picture. So if we have a bicycle wheel and we're told that the diameter here is 66 centimeters, step one is the picture, step two is the given information, we can start to write down what it is we actually have. The radius would be half of this, so it would be 33 centimeters and we know that our length unit default should be meters so we can do that now and so we'll get 0 0.33 meters for the radius of this bicycle wheel and we're told that it's spinning at a rate of two revolutions every three seconds so if we think about omega as theta over t, we have two revolutions over three seconds. And we can multiply that revolutions to get rid of that unit because we need this to be in radians per second. One revolution is equal to two pi radians, so that goes on our conversion factor. This could look like train tracks also. Um, but we end up with 2 times 2 times pi divided by 3, 4.19 radians per second. So for part A, uh, and all of this came before we even started to um, look at the questions themselves. This should be the way that we are always approaching problems, is putting from words into picture and uh, an informational list, the stuff that we're given in the problem before we decide whether or not we've seen a problem like this, whether or not we've decided that we're able to handle it or not. If we can outrun our brain's decision that it's too scary looking, we'll be able to get a lot more on our page before we decide that we need to step away. So in the first part, we are asking for the angular speed of the wheel in metric units. If we have approached this problem really the way that we want to, and with practice, it will be easier to recognize that revolutions is a unit of angle. And so it is what we can put in for our understanding of theta. It becomes easier to recognize the information given is angular speed and whether we did it in our list of given information or whether we do that calculation in step A, we need to write down the typical metric units of angular speed are radians per second. All right, part B is asking for the tangential speed. So we look at our list of given information and we look at the equations that we have for V our two options, I'll write them both down here so we can recognize why one of them will not work for us. That's a radius. If we look at our list of given information, we don't have the value of the arc length here. Certainly we could find it, two revolutions times the circumference, we could do that, but this is going to be a faster method. We already have these values. So r is 0 0.33, omega is 4.19. Um, I will put in the units. Normally we don't because it starts to get messy. I know that in chemistry you're kind of told to always do it, but we tend to have them be a little bit too messy to always keep track of in the equations. But this illustrates something useful here. We've mentioned it before in the lecture videos, but the radians, they have their puff of smoke and then they're gone. 
We do not need that unit anymore if we already have the meters attached here. So we will get our answer, 1.38, 1.38, and it will be in units of meters per second because that radians unit just disappeared. We no longer needed it, it went away. All right, so that's part B. Part C is asking if the rolling wheel travels 92 meters. So now it's saying the travel length is 92 meters. And this is also the arc length S. We want to know how many revolutions it will have made if that is the um, angular speed and tangential speed, and this is the radius here. So with lots of information available to us, we might be overwhelmed picking what equation to use, but what is really important here is that we don't know how long it took to go 92 meters. We don't have the time. So we have to turn to our original equation, I think it's the first one we had in our chapter 6 slides, that the angle theta, which again, we need to be able to recognize revolutions is an angle unit. So we're looking for theta, we have s and from our original set of things given, we have r. So 92 meters over 0 0.33 meters. When those meters cancel, we end up with 279 radians. And again, cloud of glitter and smoke, radians just magically appears because it does have that special property of being what we call dimensionless. Now, we needed the unit revolutions instead, so we have to multiply this by one revolution divided by two pi radians in order to force the radians to go away. And so we end up with 44.4 revolutions. And I strongly, strongly encourage you to, in your calculator, type this in because one of the most common math mistakes that we see is even if we've been good about it otherwise, a lot of students think our calculator assumes 2 pi is just some single number, but that is 2 times pi, and if we do not have parentheses around the bottom, we'll get something closer to 400 revolutions, which is an incorrect answer, and we do not want to get that um, wrong in our heads. So that's it for this example. Um, there are other examples from this section in the extra practice sets, the skill drills. And so uh, you will see more than one of these on the problem set. But fundamentally, uh, it is simplest if you follow the problem solving process of drawing a picture, making a list of the given information as you go, because there are only a couple of possible tools available to you for any given unknown you have. And that list of, all right, what do I have available to plug in there is going to be essential to knowing what you can and cannot solve for based on any given tool. So I will see you in the next section of the chapter with plenty of example videos in that section. Thanks for listening.